This drive is way crazier than we thought it would be. Hey, we're Emily and Danny, and we've been traveling by van from Alaska all the way down here to Patagonia in Argentina for four years with our cat Graham and our dog Sombrita. We have 23 hours left to drive to the end of the Pan American Highway, Ushuaia, Argentina. Uh, this is pretty sick. I just gave my approval to the final launch pad here. We're about to blast off. This spot is looking good. <laughs> and I think we're gonna have a very nice couple of days here. In the middle of nowhere. Out here, some lake, our own meadow. Well, at the end of the road, there was this little paradise here. It was a really long, kind of crazy road. This spot is super worth it. We rolled up here. Actually, the road goes a little bit further all the way down to the lake, but it is a little flooded right now. I think that we can make it down, but I'm not quite sure if we'll be able to make it back up in the van. This spot is perfect anyway because of the tree right here. It's sheltered from the wind, which in Patagonia is crucial to find this shelter from the wind everywhere you go. Because dang, yeah, the wind can really pick up. I found this spot so that Sombrita and Graham would be able to wander around. I love just driving around the world and unlocking the geography, how it all fits together, the puzzle pieces. And here we came out of the mountains and then came back. And so we've been following the Andy Mountains all the way. So we still have a super long way to go. We're making it down there slowly and surely. This spot wasn't really on any list that we set out to go to, but sometimes with the van, you just have to accept the present moment and enjoy wherever you are because this is pristine mountains, snow-capped peaks, lakes, forests. Might not be anywhere famous, but this is epic here. <laughs> and throughout the trip, one of the best possible places or things we've ever done is just to get away in nature. Here, when I look up at the stars, I'm not even going to recognize them. I'm still far away from home. It's crazy that we've driven so far, we don't even recognize the stars. It's like we're in a different galaxy over here. Yeah. <laughs> right over here is a priceless view, and the sunset is still going on. So, we're going to enjoy. There's the van, nice spot. Just check out up here. We're protected from, with this hill by the wind. But look at this view. Snow-capped peaks, lake. Holy, it really ain't bad here. And while we're contemplating this view, looks like we have a little visitor. So we were just feeling out some alternate spots to park for today in this area, having our morning coffee. What do you got? Tea. She drinks black tea in the morning. And you can see there was the road that we came in on, back from that super sketchy road out there. And I kind of like this area. This is like the top half of the campsite. And here you get the lake view. But down there where the van is, is like its own little meadow. It feels like its own world. And here would be windy because it's super exposed with this lake view. Yeah, just having a nice little morning walk. Wanted to let you guys in on a little bit of a van maintenance issue here. 
what I broke this week. When you're designing your van and you make some shelves, you got two options. You can use these things, which you drill some holes so you can actually move the shelf later. And I think we did use that. This shelf is constantly falling down. You just choose the side like we did with this shelf here. We've never had a problem. We did the, the jig hole, the pocket jig. Jigs. Pocket hole. No, pocket hole jig set. Jig hole pocket. It's a pocket hole jig. We used the pocket hole jib. <laughs> Was that right? No. <laughs> pocket hole what? So for these permanent shelves, we used a pocket hole jig you know, hide that screw under there. Really great way to do it if you're doing that beforehand. I don't have that with me, so we're just gonna drill some holes in from the end, make this a permanent shelf because we have probably fixed this a million times. Took down everything here, all the magnets and whatnot. This is what the spices stick to here. Uh -oh. so, so. We're getting some really good solar here though because the panels are actually angled toward the sun in this uh, nice little park job, I would say. Let's charge up that battery. So I don't know if you've ever heard it, the quote, an escalator cannot break, can only become stairs. It is super hard to drill. By hand tightened all these four screws. That thing is solid now. Little van life improvement, little recommendation if you're building a van. Don't use these temporary shelf things. Just make it permanent. These little things will just slip out. It's really nice now, we don't have to worry about that. Something else I wanna do while I have this all cleaned up here, switch out these little rusted washers here with some nice fresh ones. I think it's just the perfect spot out here to get some random things done on the van I've been meaning to do. But check out where Graham's chilling up here. Best view in the house. Hey buddy. What more could a cat want? I got kind of crazy and he jumped up here. My coat was here and he likes there, you know. Look what we had to do. We fixed my coat. So that's van tweak number three, I guess. <laughs> I got these gear patches for Danny one year for Christmas. I was getting him a new ski jacket and I thought like, oh, well, if anything happens to his ski jacket, he can just use these gear, these gear patches. It's called Tenacious Tape Gear Patches. Yeah, it looks really good. <laughs> We have big news, we bought a shower! And it's going to go inside of the van. Figured out where it was sold. It's actually only sold in Europe. And Danny's parents happened to be in Spain at the time. They actually purchased it for us, which thank you very much. So we're finally going to try and hang it up here in the van, see how it works. It's gonna be super duper cool. It's not going to be like our shower 100% of the time. We're still going to take showers most of the time outside of the van, but this will be really nice. So we can take a shower in here every once in a while. Danny just went down to the lake to get some water because we already do have one of the shower bags that you can set out in the sun. It heats up in the sun and then you can use it to shower. Yeah, whenever Danny gets back, we'll show you guys what this shower looks like and we'll, we're gonna try and hang it up. Our biggest thing is that we don't really wanna put too many more holes in the ceiling. So we're gonna try and use bungee cords. <laughs> All right, we have the shower here and I'll take it out for you guys to see. Honestly, I've only taken it out once before and don't know how it's gonna go in here. Looks like it comes with some more bungee cord. So this is the tube for the drain. Here's the actual shower. So it basically creates its own tiny little square room and it has a piece of fabric on the bottom. The piece of fabric connects to this tube which we can put into the gray water tank that will probably be sitting outside. So we can collect the water. Here are the attachment points. I don't know, this might be a little bit harder than I thought. <laughs> Step one, got it out of the bag. Okay, these must not go like this. There is a zipper part, makes it so that you can step into the shower. And maybe I'll put that this way. And yeah, we'll try and hang it up to this bungee cord somehow. All right, let's try some stuff out and I'll let you guys know what I come up with. <laughs> we have our own little portable shower. So pretty sweet that we were able to just toss a shower in here. So now Emily is gonna boil up some hot water 
So I can add that to the lake water. Reusing that solar shower thing we already had. And let me show you how the drain of this thing works. Out the side here is a, a tube that comes out the bottom. And we just toss that into our gray water tank. Time to give it a shot. Okay, so the inside of our shower, it's got a little compartment here to put your soap. The solar shower, we have it hanging up from the carabiner right there. And we just have it hooked up to the sides with this little bungee that they gave us and the bungee hooks over to our curtain bar over to our projector mount. Just a whole string of bungee cords and carabiners. <laughs> we did not need to put any holes in the ceiling, which I'm super excited about. I do think maybe it should be a little bit higher, but for us, it's perfect right now. Yeah, I'm really stoked to have a shower. Danny's gonna be the first one to test it out. Yeah, hopefully boiling this water and adding it to the lake water does the trick. Normally we would have filled it up earlier and left that black bag in the sun. I think it's gonna be just fine, so. How's the drain? You know, the drain's in the right angle for where the van is. Did you think about that? Yeah. Yeah, you got it in the right corner, babe. Yeah. I think that's probably important. Ooh. Pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> Clean in the middle of nowhere. Oh, didn't get wet at all down here. Sweet. All went out there into the gray water. Not a bad spot for a shower, guys. What did you think? Was it pretty good? It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you could get the water warmer because uh -huh. it is pretty cold out right now. I'm going to try it tomorrow. I'm going to get the solar effect yeah. a lot earlier tomorrow. Get nice warm water. Yeah. It would be perfect, you know. It's a pretty good system here. I'm loving it. Graham is not known to climb trees, but there he is doing it. <laughs> Graham! Guy. Are we feeling adventurous today on this nice tree to climb here? Climbed up there, huh, little guy? It's definitely too hot for normal people that would eat a chocolate cake. Mm. Wow, a bit of a crazy morning. We'd like to stay here more nights, but if you remember that road on the way here, and it looks like rain. So we're thinking we better pack up quick and get out of here because that road had so many dried mud spots and that detour around the complete landslide. Yeah, there's a lot of black clouds on the horizon and it sucks to cut our stay short. It's pretty critical <laughs> to not getting stuck out here. I was like a little bit worried about getting out of this camp spot later because I, that road was really intense. So I've been kind of sitting with that thought. But then this morning, Emily looked out the, the window and she said, oh, it looks like rain. That got us moving pretty quick. Like we weren't panic level. You know, honestly, the whole time I've been wondering if the van would even be able to start and drive out of that spot. <laughs> we parked right before the wet spot and I think we did a great job. It was just like so out there on our own. Like we didn't see a single person the whole time we were there. Yeah. And that's what makes a good spot if you ask me. Because in the van there's so many times where we have to park in the middle of a city or a ski mountain and we're relying on so many other people. But out here it's just us and it's so nice. It's a really good feeling whenever you're just on your own. Well, the skies are looking darker. The horizon is not clear anymore. The only thing is we're coming up to the sketchiest part of the whole road where the whole road had been washed out. The whole road was a disaster. Oh no, we got an engine code. Okay, Emily's checking the code. <laughs> EVAP system. I don't know why I did that, but yeah, it's just an EVAP code. All right, we're coming up to the sketchy part that looks like just a rip in the earth. That's 
spot was crazy. You know, I haven't even brushed my teeth yet. We just thought, let's get out of here. And we're starting to see some water on the dash. From here on, it's just like these deep tracks that like the van would get so stuck in. So I really got to keep an eye peeled up ahead. And you know, the whole time we were out there, we didn't use the heater because right now we're at about a third a tank of gas. And the one gas station that was supposed to be on the map, completely abandoned. It's just kind of funny, these van things, you know, that just go on in the back of your mind that you try not to stress about because you want to be out here having a good time. Oh man, that was a close call. We actually did a rock. I thought we were going to clear this rock. And I think it hit the transmission. I left the tent in the transmission. Ooh, close call. It reminds me of an Ecuador. If you haven't seen that video, we actually hit the oil pan and hit it hard enough that oil was just gushing out the bottom of the van. In the middle of nowhere with no service, even farther in the middle of nowhere than this. Check out that video, we'll put the link here. That was truly one of the craziest things that can happen if you live in a van or travel in a van and you like going to these out of the way places. Oh, thank goodness the transmission is not leaking right now. Pavement! Ruh, ruh, ruh. So we're starting a long drive down to El Calapate. It's gonna be around 12 hours through the grasslands here. So we're going to check out this eye overlander spot which is a uh, emergency water supply. Supply of bottled water. You'll even find some new unopened bottles here. So what is this gonna be? Uh, it doesn't seem like there's much around. What do you think it's gonna be, Emily? I wonder if it's for people that are traveling in the desert, you know? What? Gee, this looks like nothing, right? This is what it is right here. So oh. I Overlander says emergency bottled water. It is. Yeah. There is bottled water there if you really need. Wow, we're not taking no. that water. Coming to you guys from the road here in Patagonia. This is a really awesome place to be because you don't have cell service like the whole time, which is awesome. I think today we're even gonna have to be careful not to run out of gas, fill up whenever we see a station, which is really reminding me of the farthest north we got up in Alaska when things just start to thin out. And here, instead of a ton of mosquitoes, we got a ton of wind. <laughs> Almost every place you are is super windy. But in Alaska, we were looking for the wind to avoid the mosquitoes. So on this drive, we have some beautiful animals that we're passing all the time called Wanakos. They're kind of like the vicuñas in Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia. They're really, really cute wild llamas. And I think that they're a little bit bigger than vicuñas, but so cute either way as we drive along this flat, endless, desert. We make sure to keep the fan closed at all times because yeah that thing can just get ripped off out here. It is so windy. Also the mirror of course is just folding in every five seconds. There's no point in trying to use it. So windy it just blows right in. And another thing about this road is we'll come to a stretch where the potholes are ridiculous. Like all across the road you're driving on the shoulder for a ways just to avoid these huge pits that when you don't have cell service and you're in the middle of nowhere, you hit one of those bad follows the wrong way and you're gonna be in trouble, you know? But the van's running pretty well here in the middle of nowhere. Just gonna need to get an oil change when we get there and, you know, have another look at the suspension, see what's going on. Hola, buenas. Bien, que tal? Ah, yo quiero super. Esto es nafta. Si. Um, con la mano abajo. Uh, 
bad news. We've been on a gravel road for so long and we're gonna be on a gravel road for so much longer. We did not know this was coming. We thought that the road, this Ruta Cuarenta, was gonna be paved the whole way. And this is taking like way longer than we thought it would. So pretty boring, pretty upsetting. And we can only drive like 30, well, we can only drive like 20 miles an hour on this road, like 30 kilometers an hour, which is just so painfully slow. <laughs> There's some monacos. Oh, monacos. Honestly, that's the first monacos I've seen in a while. This road is so boring. Well, maybe I'm just paying attention to the road also. Like that? Beautiful. How beautiful. Well, there's no none over there for you to look at, Sombri, huh? Where do those guys go? <laughs> oh my gosh, the end is near. Thank goodness. We can see the pavement. It's almost here. Whenever I jumped onto this gravel road, I was looking for the pavement because so many times we dropped down into gravel and it just was pavement like 20 feet later. And now we're finally getting to the pavement. Yes! Like two hours later. <laughs> we made it! Just listen to this. Oh my gosh, I feel like my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, there's no like distracting, like rattling. Yeah, and speaking of noises, it sounds like we haven't developed any new ones along that stretch. <laughs> Why don't you give it just a little jimmy left and right? No, yeah, everything. Everything is all good. Oh, thank goodness. Good job driving that section, Emily. Oh, that was so crazy. Well, good morning. Last night we made it all the way here to the lake around Al Calafate, Lago Argentina, I think. Yes, that's correct. And it is a beautiful glacier blue, like more blue than I've seen in a really, really long time lake. It's amazing. We got to take the pets for a walk here in our wild campsite, but unfortunately Sombrita rolled in something <laughs> that makes her smell so bad. Oh my gosh, Emily was over at the lakefront trying to wash the dog off that uh, Oh my gosh, I couldn't get the smell out. She got a little bit of a vinegar water bath and I think it's helping, but we might have to do that a couple more times. It's so cute when the pets are out on the walk, seeing Graham roll around and you know, he was rolling around on this hill, so he kept going lower and lower and lower. <laughs> You're sliding downhill, buddy. But yesterday, honestly, the road was so rough, and when we got back to the pavement, it just felt like a party. Oh, so good. And when we found this spot, it was already dark, but there's no wind here, because there's a hill to the side, and this wind has felt so relentless. You the just feel time. distracted. There's always something whistling in the background. Yeah. And actually, it messed up our door, because we were super careful with it, too but we couldn't even close it. Like we had both of us, Emily was pulling me, I was pulling the door. We're also doing something kind of cool, a cool traveler tip we want to tell you about. Yeah, so here in Argentina, we've already told you guys about how this is a cash economy for us travelers. 
So the new travel hack we figured out is buying a plane ticket in cash at the airport. <laughs> yes. So it feels like we're kind of in the 90s right now. <laughs> yeah. And we've already done it once for my parents because they're coming to visit, but Emily's dad's coming later. So today yeah. we're going to the airport and we're buying another plane ticket in cash. And if he would have bought this ticket online, he would get double the price that we're gonna get in cash today. So better than getting it through American on your ticket, better than even buying it online separately, or buying using, it in cash, Yeah. half price. Half price. Let's get back on the road and finish up this drive and then we can just hang out in this area for a while. So luckily we were just in the shop for an oil change this week and to make sure we're buying the correct parts for Danny's parents to bring down. So we're still driving out of here. Thanks so much for coming along. We'll see you guys next week exploring El Calafate with Danny's parents. If you like this video, let us know in the comments, like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support us a bit more, head over to our Patreon. We'll see you guys next time.